announcements um, in, in terms of Cameron's done a nice job just in, in development. Um, and we're, we're, it's a competition. It's kind of an ongoing competition at, at, at both the, the guard spots right now. Uh, nobody's really seized it and, and separated themselves from those other guys and, and just to get a fresh, fresh guy in there every now and then. But between um, Hamani, Everett, Mana, and Cameron, it, we're kind of sorting it out. Um, competition is always good, you know, and especially when it's not like we're sitting here just, oh my gosh, we, you know, we can't play with this guy type, you know, it's not that, that type of situation, which I've been in those before too, where you're, you're trying to tool everything to, you know, either have this guy, whatever, always pull or this guy always, you know, be front side, backside or whatever, whatever the, the kind of the scheme would be. Um, it's not that type of situation. It's a, it's a healthy competition. And, and I think all those guys, all those guys are getting better. We just wish that, you know, like, like everything we wish it was 100% consistently better. I'm going to close this. Fix that. Go ahead. What has uh, Lockie done to separate himself a little bit from Rodriguez, and how close is that competition? Again, I think it's very, very close. It's almost very similar to the to the guard spot in a lot of ways. Um, I, I think the biggest the biggest thing is just take care of the ball. Um, and you know, it's when they when they've had time to play. Of course, they both thrown interceptions, which is a, a uh, natural thing for a backup quarterback competing for a job. It's always, man, I'm going to win it with this one throw. And then it's a forced pick. And so that, that, that's just the kind of stuff you're trying to wring out of those guys is, is just make great decisions, take care of the ball, you know, play, play the system. Um, but I, I think just in general, he's just a, you know, a little bit ahead in, in taking care of the ball. And, and a lot of that is, is kind of decision based. Is, is their development progressing on a normal pace? Whereas Marcus was sort of a, Freaking nature. Um, are, are you saying just? A, <clears throat> I'm saying people saw Marcus come out as a retro freshman and just mm -hmm. dominate from the get go. Whereas right. when people see uh, Jeff and Jake come out, they've struggled a little bit. Whereas that's sort of the norm for young quarterbacks, isn't it? Um, that's probably a fair generalization, yeah. And, and Marcus is obviously a. There's not too many of those guys walking around, you know, in society. Um, but I, by the same token, when those guys have been in the games, it's been, you know, it's been a mixed bag from a game plan standpoint. You never know exactly what's going on from a protection standpoint. When they've been in there, it's, it's mostly been against other people's first unit and it's not our first unit protecting, you know, just all those things that, that wouldn't, wouldn't be the situation if, the, if they were quote unquote, the guy. Um, so we might find out, we might not find out and I'm good if we don't. Coach, how would you uh, describe where you are with determining D'Anthony's role? I mean, early on, you kind of used him as the feature back. Now we're seeing him in different areas. Where are you with that? Ongoing. Uh, you know, it's another another place where just kind of that's a, a team deal, too, between kind of how those tailbacks have developed, which which Byron and, and, and Thomas are, are, are getting better uh, in, in every way. And part of it's part of it's due to that. And then part of it's going to going to be due to whoever we're playing, you know, how, how their system kind of fits. Um, all right. We can line up in this formation and we know we're going to kind of have A, B or C as a as a look. Um, uh, so it's, it, it's, it's ongoing. We, you know, we want to, we want to get him the ball as well as Braylon and Josh and the tight ends and our tailbacks and, and, and the quarterback fit in there as well. You happy with how much you guys are getting the ball? Um, well, sort of yes and no, but again, part of, part of that, if you're looking at, you know, if you just look at the last game, you know, get him the ball and we turn it over. Uh, there's a couple situations where we maybe could have got him the ball. There's also a, several situations where they're, they're kind of overcompensating for him and, and we're running the ball. Uh, and, you know, last week, such a limited, weird, weird um, numbers game just due to the possessions. Uh, I don't think there's anything long-term to read into that. He's getting more than he was last year. Is he? Yeah. See, you... There you go. Getting back to the, the backup quarterbacks, um, Jeff and Jake, Jeff specifically, what makes you confident that if Jeff has to be the guy and if Jeff has to play that you guys can still win and still be successful on offense with Jeff as your quarterback? Uh, I've seen him practice. And and the same thing with with Jake too, and and I think the biggest thing is is our our team has confidence in those guys and has seen them in action and and you know all, all how how they f would fit within our system and and again it's a system 
you know, where we want, we want those guys to, to make great decisions and, and be great with the ball, all those things that, that go into that. Uh, we're very confident in those guys. What are Jeff's, I guess for both, what are their strengths? Didn't we, uh, didn't we have this discussion? We had that. Uh, you know, Jeff is a, Jeff's, Jeff's a kind of a point guard, you know, kind of mentality, uh, kind of looks like John Stockton, right? So you can tight shorts and everything, but he, uh, He's, um, you know, kind of more in that role of distributor, um, is a little bit, he's a little bit faster, I think, than even he probably gives himself credit for, um, had a, had a long, uh, run last year. I can't remember. It was a scrimmage, you know, against our first, first team guys and, and, and had a, had a huge, huge run. And I think that a bunch of people were, were surprised by that. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he's a productive player. Hey, Coach, I'm just curious, what do you do to get over a loss? I mean, personally, yourself, I mean, talk to the players and say, oh, we go play video games. I mean, do you get away from football for a few hours or a day? Or, I mean, how did you try to cope with that first loss? Of the season? I might need to get some video games, but I don't know. I don't, um, uh, you know, I... I I don't know. Um, I, I think in, in any any situation, you're you're obviously trying to to set the tone. In in my current role, you know, I'm setting the tone for a bunch of guys. It was probably a little bit different than than in my role in the past, um, and and we've flushed it. I'm violating my own rule by even commenting on this, but no, uh, of just like in a win, you evaluate. Hey, why did this work? Why did this not work? Maybe it was luck. Maybe it was scheme. Maybe it was our execution. How can we coach this better? How can we put our guys in the best possible position? Okay, do more of this, do less of this, you know, whatever that is, and then move on. And if you win 72 to 2, there's stuff to fix. And if you lose uh, 26 to 20, there's stuff to fix. Um, and, and, that you know, and then you go, and then you believe in in your your preparation. We had a, a, a really good practice this morning. I think our guys have ha, have moved on, and and we have to. We're, we're playing against a really good uh, team this week. That we need to know mu- nothing more than you know they they beat Stanford, and 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 did a great job in that game, and, and have been in almost without exception in every one of their losses. It's like Friday, you didn't try to get away from it for a few hours, and you were in here doing your thing. No, that's what I think Aaron, you know, yesterday I had asked something along to that effect. If it was probably a good thing and probably a bad thing that there were a couple extra days. You know, I, want, I wanted to, you know, I wish we could have re-kicked it 10 minutes after the game and, you know, called do-over, but we can't. And and so, you, you again, you you believe me, there's there's no money more, you know, second guessing. We call that evaluating. You know, we evaluate what what we could do differently, what we could do better, uh, again, from from every angle, and then we move on. Mark, you just mentioned Utah beat Stanford, and yet they're one in five in the Pac-12. What does the film say their story is? Well, defensively, they're outstanding. You know, they've they've really kept, with the exception, uh, the Oregon State game was, was you know a high scoring game. They've they've kept their their offense in it. They're excellent special teams units as well. Um, Coach Whittingham has always you know I've always been a fan of his defenses in terms of fan of defense, not in terms of playing against them. Uh, but uh, they do a great job from a just a schematic standpoint. They're very sound, and then they play really hard. Um, and they they've you know created a bunch of you know you look at last week and what was it nineteen seven and late in the in the fourth quarter and and had a tough tough finish to that to Arizona State game and they've had a lot of games like that and they've been very close. Um, offensively, they're st- you know have have had a couple huge explosive games. Had a what a seventy point game, a couple fifty point games, and then have struggled a little bit of late. Part of that again is due to who they're playing. Um, but we we know what we're up against, and it's a tremendous tremendous program. Three. Speaking on Stanford, you've had a couple of days to look at the film. Is what would you say is their the biggest challenge you guys are going to go up against on Saturday against them? Against Utah? I mean, on Utah. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> See, you have not turned the page. Um, they're, they're, I think, again, their front, uh, much like Stanford, their front is, is a huge strength of theirs. Their defensive ends are both really active guys. Uh, they have a bunch of, of both zone pressure and man pressure that they, they do a great job of, of disguising and creating a bunch of issues for, for your front guys. Uh, offensively, they got to have two great tailbacks. The, the quarterback runs a lot better than, than I think he's he's you'd expect from a guy that's that tall. He's a great runner. 
Um, and then they've got a couple guys on the perimeter that they that are capable, uh, you know, especially in a, like a maximum play action type of situation. They try to put you on an island and and y- y- they do a good job spreading the field. So it's a uh, and then special teams, like I said, they're 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 outstanding. Their scheme is outstanding. Uh but it, 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 like I said, it doesn't take long for you again to, to flip the page just by watching their film and, and knowing what is ahead. Coach at Stanford, you had Wogan kick all the extra points. Is that an indication that he's your kicker now? He's our kicker now. Yep. Okay. Uh, and was part of that Alejandro's mindset? I mean, after, after UCLA he said at halftime, he thought about quitting. Uh, I, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into depth situations that that you know i think are best kept behind closed doors uh but matt matt is our our kicker going forward i think is the best way to put that any other questions oh ryan uh speaking of kickers that onside style with the ball perpendicular however it's laid out is that something you guys have done for a while or is that new or um, that's been, you know, the last couple of years when they changed the rule, you know, how guys used to just pound it down in the ground and it would pop up that they, they, they made, they changed the rule that, that you can now fair catch that. Cause that used to count as a bounce, but now it has to bounce co- technically twice. And so a lot of kickers have gone to that as a, uh, better means to, to get a, you know, unpredictable type of, of hop on at least the second hop. So it eliminates the, the opportunity for the return team to fair catch it. Aaron? Is it all? Is this, yeah, sorry. Aaron? Is it at all intriguing and or a little bit more difficult to prepare for a conference team you haven't seen yet in conference play? You haven't played them since '09, I believe. So is it right? Is it pretty different? You haven't played against any of these players. Um, that's a good question. I I guess not not too much. You know, um, we we have you know we'll looked at and I've I've looked at our game in in '09. I'm glad you called, said that year before I did. I would have guessed wrong probably, uh, but um, and they're they're very similar. Their style is very similar. The play, the individuals are different for sure. Uh, but y- you can you can get a pretty good look at guys by this this point in the season. There's so you know there's a pretty big library of film, both from a formation standpoint and and just a, a you know we can watch number eight and know that that guy can get off the rock. You can look at number nine and know his you know kind of primary pass rush move and his counter and just those kind of things. There's a, a, a good, a good bank of stuff for our guys to, to look at. Getting back to the kickers. I don't know if I missed it earlier in the week or last week. When did you make the decision to go with Matt as your starter and for what you can talk about or want to talk about for the reasons, uh, how did that competition, I guess, end and, and Matt win the job? I would be lying if I told you I, when, uh, that that decision was made because I, I you know we talked about it a few different times last week, but I think it comes down to nothing more, nothing less than we think he gives us the best chance to to make the kick, um, and he's he's done a, a you know a better job, and and we're going. 